I saw four dead children this morning heaped on a stretcher. One of them was about 18 months old, and I could tell this because his feet were the same size as my own son's. The rest of him was so thin and tortured that he no longer looked human. I'm told that he died from diarrhea after eating poison leaves because there was nothing else to eat. In other words, he starved to death. Of course, he didn't have to die, but unfortunately, the cost of keeping him alive was inflationary. Some milk powder and a handful of grain every day would have cost at least 20 pence. I must apologize. This really isn't appropriate New Year television, is it? Especially with all our own problems of inflation in Britain. Indeed, before I came here, I was told many times, don't do Bangladesh, people won't watch it, they'll switch over. And of course, I can sympathize with people who do switch over, because I realize that I and other reporters have helped to immunize people against Bangladesh by reporting their horrors year after year. But I do ask you to watch this film, because I believe that possibly the greatest famine in recorded history has now begun here, with tens of thousands of people already dead and dying and suffering. I also believe that Bangladesh could become the world's most ignored tragedy because Mr. Kissinger and Mr. Brezhnev have now agreed on a world doctrine in which a country like Bangladesh is expendable. It has no oil, it has no real strategic value, it has no military power, it has no practical purpose. All it has is people who now wish to live. <laughs> Today is an average day in the streets of Dhaka, now the most desperate of cities, more desperate, I'm told, than even Calcutta and Shanghai in the 30s. In normal times, this lorry collects the bodies of a few dozen destitutes. Now it collects hundreds of bodies, all of them starved to death including this 11-year-old girl whose name was Hasna, who died in the gutter a few hours before we arrived, with her mother and brother beside her, still with nothing to eat. Well, I've been out here really for 30 years. I came out in 1942, and I think I can quite honestly say that this is by far the worst emergency that I've ever seen in, in, in this part of the world. There have been others, but when I was young, I didn't really pay all that much attention. Yes. But latterly, I have seen um, bad years in, in India and, and uh, Assam and Bengal, but nothing like this. If you go early in the morning, you'll find bodies lying around in the streets of Dhaka. And the other day, I saw the mother who had uh, lost her child, and she was using the child's body, in fact, as a, a means of getting money, uh, begging. <coughs> So this film will go out on January the 2nd. How much worse will the situation be here in Bangladesh? Starvation cases uh, can only get worse. This is the, I think, perhaps the basic thing. The, there, are some, there are many starvation cases which are now medical cases. And if they're left longer, there'll be lots more deaths. In other words, they're dying. They, they are dying. This is, the, this is the, the heart of the matter. And by January the 2nd, they'll be dead. Many of them will, yes, most certainly. Why have these children been allowed to starve? Why have they not been saved? The answer is not what you have often been told, that Bangladesh is so corrupt it is beyond redemption. For some of us who came here at the birth of this country, reporters, foreign aid officials, political do-gooders, Bangladesh was no more than a brief cynical romance, a source of good copy, and now the story and the cause are stale, the problem too great, the tragedy unfashionable. These people are starving to death because two crops were ruined by flood and because of certain major political decisions taken outside Bangladesh. We were too concerned with oil to notice that in 1974 food became a political weapon, a more lethal weapon than oil. 
We can do without oil. We cannot do without food. The United States Secretary of State, Dr. Henry Kissinger, controls the distribution of all American surplus food abroad. Not one country on his priority list is hungry. All are Dr. Kissinger's client states. All comply with his world strategy in return for favors such as food. At the top of the priority list are Chile, Cambodia, South Korea, and South Vietnam. South Vietnam, which gets more American food than any other country, not only exports its own rice, but openly sells America's food to buy arms in order to continue a war on America's behalf. Bangladesh is not on Dr. Kissinger's priority list. Dr. Rudin, would you ask him if most of the people who are buried in the cemetery die of starvation? He says that most of the cases, death cases, are from starvation. On December the 8th, 1974, a secret report by the U.S. State Department was leaked in Washington. It gave examples and details of the use of food as a means of shoring up one regime and blackmailing another. It quoted a top official whose job is to carry out Dr. Kissinger's strategic policies. He said, to give food aid to countries just because they are starving is a pretty weak reason. Six million people died in concentration camps during four years in World War II. Almost as many people may have died in Bangladesh in the last four years. Years of drought, flood, epidemic, a genocidal war and now famine. Perhaps the greatest famine of all. I don't draw this parallel idly. I happen to be standing in the middle of a field piled high with human skeletons. Bones and skulls and pieces of human hair for as far as I can see now being picked over by crows. This is just one cemetery in Dhaka, and today they are digging up last month's famine victims in order to bury today's victims. 85 since 7 o'clock, 10,000 since last July, and most of them young, starved children. Many of these children died because they couldn't get milk. Last year, the United Nations in Dhaka stopped feeding starving children a powder made from milk and soya beans, simply because the common market countries had bought up all American soya bean stocks to use as cattle feed. And yet the EEC Council of Ministers haggled for months before releasing a miserable 63 million pounds as relief aid, an eighth of what they had promised to 25 hungry countries, of which Bangladesh is but one. And incidentally, many of these children died because they found it impossible to eat what they got from the much ballyhooed World Food Conference. Nothing but platitudes. He's his son. That's his son. son. When did he die? Just today? Last yes. night. Last night. Yes. How old, how old was he? Boys, how old was he? Boys, three months old. Dr. Henry Kissinger opened the World Food Conference in Rome with these words. We must proclaim a bold objective. That within a decade, no child will go to bed hungry, that no family will fear for its next day's bread, and that no human being's future and capacities will be stunted by malnutrition. Our responsibility is clear. Let the nations gathered here resolve to confront the challenge and not each other. My colleague, Eric Piper, took these pictures at a relief camp near Dhaka, one which Dr. Kissinger did not visit when he came to Bangladesh on October the 30th, 1974. On that day, a State Department official gave reporters an off-the-record briefing. He said, Henry never wanted Bangladesh. With China firmly in place, there is no real strategic value here. There is nothing here, really. All the people working these fields yes. have sold their crops. Yes. Years ahead, they've put themselves yes. in pawn to buy yes. food. Yes, exactly. Mm. They have uh, nothing to hope for, uh, at least for another six to eight months. 
Mm. You see, most of the crops uh, in these areas have been damaged. Yes. And this is what... Uh, All damaged been... by the flood. Yeah. yeah. Who have they sold their crops to? Well, they have sold these crops uh, to those well, the... who have collected yes. money out of relief and these... All sort of advantages. Big landowners. Yeah, yeah, big big landowners. Money men. Yes. An old journalist friend has brought me to this village in the district of Shirpur, some 40 miles from Dhaka. Everybody is starving here and also suffering the effects of an inflation which began not in countries like Bangladesh or in villages like this, but in the consumer world of the West. Nothing has ever been wasted here. Now even a bicycle, the means of escape, costs 150 pounds. There are a few young men in this village. Some have gone in search of food, Others have simply fled in despair as the famine finally cracks the Bengali tradition of family. We could not film some of the women because they are among the five million in Bangladesh who are going naked because they have sold their clothes for food. Ask him what you as is, what his food situation is. He's saying that we are uh, suffering from starvation yes. and we are very poor people when, when and we cannot afford uh, uh, to uh, have regular meals. Mm. When did he last have a regular meal, a, a real meal? Aapne kota khona ke ba kodi na ke bhalo kore khai sen. Bhalo khai sa ramla koi. What is he saying? He said uh, he never uh, had a full belly meal. Mm. What is he eating then? Uh, he's eating um, flour, just a bit of uh, gruel from flour. I guess uh, a bit of the he had uh, lambs and he was a farmer. He sold out all his land. Why did he sell his land? Abne ki jono jam jam bikri korsen. Khai bar din na. Eto fat bara khai tari na. Just for food, he sold all his landed property, mm. and even then, he says that we cannot. Uh, eat to the uh, fullest content of the valley. He has uh, no land at all now? Now he has no land at all. Mm. Uh, Where will his next meal come from? Uh, well, he doesn't know where uh, he will get his food from. This little boy is probably typical of... of um, starvation where he doesn't look like the Belson case but he has he has a distended belly yeah. and he just he probably has a, about every kind of yeah. parasite and disease in him. and he's subsisting on something like the root which he's now eating yeah. and, and that little boy even though his arms are quite thick yes. is in fact starving yes there are quite a lot of children like that in this village, mm. uh, even uh, much worse than him. Uh, she says that uh, I'm ill and this is only uh, a sickness of starvation. Where are these people going to get food? I mean, they can't go on like this. Uh, no, they simply cannot uh, go on like that. The ultimate thing is uh, facing death. No chance, because no uh, government uh, relief. Have you relief, Paisan? No. Relief of... She, she did not get any relief, and she said that all these relief were uh, uh, misappropriated by the big shots of the local administration. So I did not get it. That is her yes. complaint. When did she last see grain or rice? It's three months she did not see a single plate of rice. She's just surviving on the gruel uh, from uh, flour. Tell me something, how do people living so poorly and eating so badly, not eating at all, how do they survive? How do they survive for three months? Well, it is strange enough, uh, John, what I think, that uh, people are prone to some sort of immunization. 
and I think uh, this is uh, particularly people of Bangladesh, they are immune to starvation. And the other thing is uh, their will to live and just <coughs> this is, uh, you see... Um, yes, but immunization can only last for so long. In yeah, the end, they can't live on uh, And uh, on that's what is happening. People are dying. They finally but, yeah, die. Finally dying. They struggle to survive. But ultimately, they'll have to yield to death out of starvation. Prime Minister, we have seen in, in villages um, uh, situations which show no food at all. People have come up to us and said, we are eating leaves, we are starving, we have no food, we're not getting it from anywhere, um, quite close to Dhaka. Why should this be so? You see, that is the, you can, some of the places this happens, but uh, we have our open free kitchen everywhere. The people are welcome to come there. And they have come. We have our camps, still we have not closed our camps. Of course we have closed, uh, we have not closed the camps, the people have started working in the fields now. But uh, of course the, this trouble is there, such a serious flood yes. and serious famine. We have not, uh, I, we have not um, suppressed the news. We have already declared in the parliament that about around about 27,000 people have died by starvation and by disease. We have not hired anything from anybody. It's a fact, natural calamities. It seemed, when, it seemed much worse than I expected in August. Uh, I've seen outside relief camps, people being turned away because the camps are full. Uh, uh, granted that you have set up these grill kitchens, but it seems that many, many people, perhaps tens of thousands of people, are simply not getting food in this country. It's not correct. Then people, 27,000 people could not even die. The people expected that few millions of people will die yes. by way of fought it. Yes. Everybody yeah. expected that few million people will die by starvation mm -hmm. after the flood, after the inflation because we had no the food grains in our go down that time. We have tried to collect from all over the world. Yes. And um, that time some people should come forward to help us, mm -hmm. but we are humble, we have, we have tried. Mm -hmm. And about 20, down about 27,000 people have died by starvation, which is a fact. Mm -hmm. We tried our best, consciously we have tried our best. While people are dying here, partly because there are so few aircraft to lift food and drugs to them, these two British helicopters stand idle. They were given by the British government, but they don't have vital parts. And in spite of pleading requests for nine months, most of the parts have still to arrive. Why isn't this one and, and the other one flying? Then? Other one. Other one is uh, some, we are sort of some spares. Yes. Don't have spares. We have already written for those spares. Why don't you have spares? We don't have spares because the uh, UK did not supply the spares. Have they supplied anyone to help you with it at all? Uh, not yet. We have, we, we, we have already yes, demand. Mm. When, did, when did that last, when did that one fly? The one that over one. there? That one, we can't say when, as soon as we receive these pairs. No, but when did it last fly? Last. Last uh, flew in the last year. Last December, year? December. It's been standing idle for yes, almost idle, a year. Yes, idle almost the year. And we have cannibalized, cannibalized last, most of the you, you would obviously be using it for relief work, wouldn't you? Yes, relief work and baby movement also. Yes. An official of the Foreign Office in London told me it was unfortunate about the helicopters, but there was a queue for spare parts with a wait of up to a year. One of the parts cost just 50 pence. Perhaps they don't know about this famine in London. Perhaps they don't know that some of the starving people in this overcrowded relief camp walked 150 miles to get here, and it was only because of a foreign film crew that these people got in. There was no shortage of aircraft to relieve the victims of the cyclone in Darwin, Australia. The air forces of Britain, America and Australia were there. None of these countries has sent aircraft to rescue the people of Bangladesh. The same answer, the famine is there. Famine it is, is there. due to this in flood. Yes. When, when you say famine is there, that means there's no food in the village at all, is that right? No, no food is there. What is, she, what is she saying about her little boy? She says that uh, she, uh, her uh, baby is suffering from disease and uh, it is uh, due to food, shortage of food. 
Excuse me, is this is this the first food they're getting since they've arrived? This is the first food. Well, the first food in weeks, is it? Or? The Soviet Union, with the biggest air force in the world, has lent Bangladesh nine creaking helicopters, which break down more than they fly. The world's new rich, the oil producers, have offered some petty cash. Saudi Arabia, for example, recently gave Bangladesh the equivalent of less than five days' food. But of course the oil countries don't like dealing with bankrupt economies, even though rising oil prices have helped to cause this famine by putting petroleum-based fertilizers out of the reach of poor countries. Which means that this starving child, the son of a farmer, will probably die. Recently, a foreign aid official visited Bangladesh for three days. He told me about a cable he sent to his government recommending a reduction in emergency relief aid to Bangladesh. He sent the cable on the basis of one helicopter trip. He said, the trouble with these people is that they have no get up and go, no success motivation. The judgment of this official is shared by other foreign diplomats here, who justify their ability to sit and watch people die by talking incessantly about local corruption, which of course exists, as the starving old woman in the village said. But need I say that this corruption is the universal symptom of a society caught in a never-ending cycle of poverty, war, catastrophe, and a scarcity of everything that is taken for granted in the West, like fresh water, and milk powder, and doctors, and blankets, and edible food. Is this corruption, or is the real corruption the world's culpable neglect of this ravaged country? Could you ask her how old her little boy is? Three years. That's three. He's extremely ill, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is he? He's, he's a bad stomach and then uh, he had fever also. She's come here to Dhaka to get food. Mm. Yes. Will he survive? There are just 75 hospital beds for children in all of Bangladesh. That works out at one bed per million of population. None of the sick and starving children in this camp will ever see a hospital. This used to be a soap factory. It is now a famine relief center near Dhaka and several thousand people are here. Almost all of them are starving and many of the young children are suffering from typhoid, smallpox and a thing called black fever. Many of them are dying. Not long ago, Dr. Henry Kissinger made his first visit to Bangladesh, squeezing it in between the Middle East and Moscow. He drove straight from the airport to the Intercontinental Hotel, talked for one hour with the Prime Minister, returned to the Intercontinental Hotel, held a press conference, drove back to the airport and left. Shortly after that, President Ford, on Dr. Kissinger's recommendation, halved the proposal for American emergency aid to Bangladesh. Instead, Bangladesh will receive more of the same from America. Boxes of army surplus biscuits and consignments of tents on which is written, important campers, don't forget to have fun. <laughs> On December the 28th, 1974, Sheikh Mujib declared a state of emergency in Bangladesh. There were shootings, arrests, and signs that Bangladesh is fast approaching political chaos as a direct result of this famine. Of course, it used to be said that starving people disturb nobody, and this certainly applies to the thousands of dead in this horrific cemetery. But Bangladesh is at the center of Asia, with borders on China, India, and Burma. And when those who somehow manage to survive this famine are finally in political turmoil, they will, I'm afraid, disturb everybody. The people of Bangladesh may then at last assume a strategic value and disturb even Dr. Kissinger. They may even disturb the United Nations, which ignores its own charter by its meanness to Bangladesh, and the Soviet Union, which heaps so-called friendship on Bangladesh and little else, and Australia, which mocks Asia with cliches about partnership while its surplus wheat stays in its silos. 
and the so-called internationalist common market, whose behaviour toward the starving of Bangladesh is that of a mean little burger, and Britain with its traditional goodwill and two idle helicopters. But of course the West has given something to Bangladesh, a disease called inflation. If you've been horrified by what you've seen, then good. No doubt the commercials in a minute's time will offer reassurance to those who feel they need it. The truth is that Bangladesh and Britain have been caught in the same blizzard of inflation, energy crisis and shortage, with the one difference. When prices go up in Britain, no one dies. When prices go up in Bangladesh, thousands die. You see, it's no longer a question of pity and charity. To hell with that. Their struggle to survive is our struggle. Beat it in Bangladesh and you beat it in Britain. It's really a simple choice that has little to do with the brotherhood of man. The alternative is that we are all expendable. <laughs>